In this episode, we'll look a little bit more at the feedback that we can have for the master behavior we have created on this button. I want to show you how you can put an icon into it and uh, we'll just get out of simulation mode, click this guy. That is uh, the uh, behavior A6. And over in the inspector, if we press show more, we see the, um, the settings that we have been setting up in the master behavior down here. And now in the feedback up here, I would like to show you how you can easily add an icon to your, to your button. And um, if you choose a data source and choose an, uh, an icon, then you have the ability to basically pick one from a library. We have a few icons here that is, uh, some of them are, are good enough, like a play button and there are some numbers and maybe some, some window divisions and, and a few things that you can choose from. Now these are all monochrome displays, so it would make most sense to take any of these. And you also see that we have some nice menu icons. It could be a, a guy like this one. So, hey, it's just picking it and then it's right there. Uh, if you want it to be actually uh, inverted, then I would suggest that you extend uh, image filters and you choose invert. And then you uh, have it uh, the way that I prefer to have it in, in these displays. Also saving a little bit on, on the lifetime of the displays by not showing all the pixels wide all the time. So that was a very easy way to add icons, but uh, what if you wanted to have the feedback on the display depending on your uh, variable that you're changing? So um, another idea uh, by just removing this could be the following. Let's uh, set up a number of conditional feedbacks here that um, I kind of feel like getting rid of this guy. Or do I? No, it doesn't matter. This is the one that actually, as I'm pressing the button in simulation mode, is lighting it up. That's what this conditional feedback does, just to remind you. It was associated with the event. You can see that in the little gray text. This is inherited from the master behavior. So there you see um, it will be active when the event cycle has been triggered within the last 300 milliseconds. Then it's going to change the intensity to on. Uh, and we could add a color if you want. So let's have fun with that. Add dark blue as a color. So we press it. It's now going to blink in dark blue. We can remove it. It's now going to just blink in the ice color, which is the underlying color of, I think, the layer down here because we put that on the layer. Now, let's do the conditional feedback I was talking about. We can choose any index we want, but let's just um, yeah go with 100 just to sort of group this together. Because inside of this one, I want to go in here and say the title should be, uh, let's edit the title. I want this to be um, VMAX. It's a little bit artificial what we're trying to do, but it's a teaching session, right? So I'll type in presets. Uh, I will type in camera selects. Okay, so really the idea of this is uh, if we are on one of these uh, values of the variable, if the menu variable is equal to vmix, I don't know why it's right here. It's like it's guessing my thoughts. But if not, I would pick it like you have seen me do in this video. So just pick the variable is equal to, this is the operator. And then finally the value is in this case, not a drop down, but something you need to know. And that is vmix here. It might end up being a drop down at some point. It's probably going to be. But what you see now is that my conditional feedback for this one, I don't know why it doesn't appear. So we found another bug. Awesome. Um, I'll just type it in manually. So how did I know that it looks like this? I do so because I already used it earlier in one of these videos. For instance, down here for the top there, I also have it right here. So it's, you know, it's the same thing that I just need to use up here. So this is the hack. If uh, you stumble upon a UI bug like this one, probably you won't. We don't have bugs when it hits you. <laughs> but uh, I, I just had it in this training video and I need to move on. So I just fixed it in the in the hardcore way by, by editing the condition directly. You can do that if you want. So uh, let's just test it. Yeah. So if I am in the vmix mode of this variable, you see that it, it chooses this conditional feedback here, giving me a title vmix presets and camera select. Now, obviously, what I really intended to do was to create a little bit of a menu in a nice way that would um, be whoops, uh, like this. OK, so now you can imagine that <clears throat> this uh, uh, greater than sign would then move to the next options as we are going through the menu. 
So let's just create the next conditional feedback. That would be 101 and then 102, maybe for the ad additional two. And we could go, out, go under like that, then manually do this. But now I am getting understimulated a little bit because I have all this manual work to do. And this is why I am now cheating. And um, I, I, so, so you guys, you can either choose to do this manually. Just do what I did right there, change the condition. And you can also go with me, be adventurous, scroll all the way down in the bottom, hit the show JSON. And that gives you this little code line. You press format to have it nicely organized. And down here, let's have a little more space for what we're doing, okay? So down here, you can see this is the JSON code underlying our behavior, right? So if we scroll down to feedback conditional, you can see that we have created this one, number 100, set up the active if to point to vmix, and then we have this display text here. So basically what I want to do, if I can see what's going on here, I would take the contents here, copy, so control or command C, I place my cursor right there, paste it in, all right? I place my cursor here, and I paste it in. So basically, these conditions would all be true at the same time. But what I would do now is to change this to presets and change this to cam cell. I remember those two value names. And then, of course, I just need to edit this one. So this is a really quickly and nicer way in some, you know, some ways. And many experts in configuring would prefer this. So you see what I've done, and hopefully as I press save, we have a success. If you forgot or you added a comma too much, you may be in trouble. This is JSON, and you can't have a comma right there, for instance, but you need to have a comma right there. There are certain rules to this, but you will generally receive a little warning if you do it the wrong way. But let's just test if this works. Yes, it does. So you see, it's like <clears throat> the UI is super great for you know doing things by following your intuition. The JSON editor is really great to understand what's going on underneath. And in this case, we have quickly modified our feedback on this button to use conditional feedback for such a great little menu as the one you see here.